Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing all the plain And the mountains in reply Echoing their joy 
Well, hello CLM and we hope you are having such a great time in these few days around Christmas. Great to see you. Welcome now to CLM's online service. We're delighted that you have joined us. If you're new to CLM Church, a particularly warm welcome. And also a special hello for any kids, for our young people joining us. Great to have you with us today. We hope you're all doing really well. And as usual, please do make use of the YouTube chat. Say hello, put some amens in there, any Bible verses that come to mind. Uh, but let's be active in that chat. And also don't forget to like and subscribe and all that uh, social media stuff. In just a moment, we are going to worship and I'm going to invite you uh, as we do that. Why not stand where you are if you are able, probably after the last two or three days, it will do you good. But it's also right and fitting that we bring our worship to God. What an incredible time of years we remember Jesus, the saviour of the world, coming into the world for us. These are the words of the angel to the shepherds from the Living Bible. He said this, don't be afraid, I bring you the most joyful news ever announced and it is for everyone. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born tonight in Bethlehem. How will you recognise him? You'll find a baby wrapped in a blanket lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God, glory to God in the highest they sang and peace on earth for all those pleasing him. So I wonder if you haven't done already, why don't you stand with us and as the band in a moment lead us into worship, why don't we begin to express our gratitude and our thanks. Lord Jesus, we worship you today and we bless you and we honour you that you are willing to leave the Father's side and humble yourself and come to a lowly stable in Bethlehem, the Saviour of the world, to redeem us and to make a way for us to come to you. And so we worship you today. We join with the armies of heaven as we lift up the name of Jesus and we lift up our voices in adoration. We bless you. We honour you. Come among us as we worship together. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love, hearts and full life.
living, ever blessing, ever blessed. Fountain of the joy of living, ocean depths of happy rest.
Yes, Jesus, we adore you. We bring ourselves, our hearts, our lives to you. As we come towards the close of this year, we come to adore you, to worship you, to honour you, and to welcome you again as King, as Lord. Come and reign in us. Come and reign in our homes. Come and reign in our families. Come and be Lord and King. Lord, we thank you for the faithfulness as we have journeyed through last year. We thank you for your presence with us. We thank you that you show yourself again and again to be faithful and good and true and dependable. And so we gladly come and adore you and worship you and bring our hearts and our lives to you. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, in this moment of worship, we invite you to come and to minister into every heart, in every home. Minister your love and your grace, your healing, your comfort, your strength. Minister your presence into every person, we pray. And we thank you, Lord, Emmanuel, with us every day, in every season, more than enough. We give you our thanks and our praise and our worship. Amen. It's been our privilege to stand with you in prayer through 2020, and we want to continue to stand with you. So please do send your prayer requests to online at clmchurch.co.uk. And right now we're going to Tracy Mumby for some notices. Hey church, hope you're having a fantastic Christmas so far and that you haven't eaten too many mince pies. If you're joining us for the first time or have just joined us over the last few weeks, a really warm welcome to you. And we would love for you to join us straight after the service in our Zoom Connect Point. It would be great to find out a little bit more about what has brought you to CLM and a chance for you to meet some of our team. We'll also be able to answer any questions you may have about how you can get better connected in the life of the church. We're also aware that at this time you may appreciate someone standing with you in prayer. So if you'd like prayer over anything you're currently facing, you can join the same Connect Point where you'll be linked with a member of our prayer team. Both our Connect Point and prayer ministry will be taking place over Zoom and we'll share the link in the YouTube chat. Or if you can't view this, simply go to your web browser and search clmchurch.co.uk forward slash connect point. The passcode which you will need to access the Zoom room is 038025. Well, we're excited to begin the new year with a dedicated time of prayer and invite you to join us from Monday 11th to Sunday the 31st of January. 21 days of prayer has now become a well-established focus in CLM's calendar. And as we seek God together and join in corporate times of prayer, we anticipate a shift in the heavenlies and to see God move. For many of us in the past, 21 days of prayer has been accompanied by fasting. And as we've done this, many have testified to encountering God in deeper ways and experiencing breakthrough and personal growth. We're giving you plenty of notice so you can prepare to be engaged. And if you're on our database, you'll hopefully by now have received a copy of this year's 21 days of prayer guide. This booklet contains some tools to help you along the way and there are a few sections for those of us who are new to prayer and new to fasting along with a number of sections for us all to engage with as we seek to align in our prayer efforts. Well for all our CLM kids we've sent out this amazing wall chart uh, with some stickers to help you as you engage also. If you haven't received any of these resources by post or you threw yours out with the Christmas wrapping by mistake please drop us an email to online at clmchurch.co.uk letting us know your name, address and what you would like or if you'd like access to a digital copy of the booklet. Then simply head over to clmchurch.co.uk forward slash 21 days of prayer. We really look forward to beginning the new year once again with a prayer focus and encourage you to prioritise this time together. And lastly, we're looking forward to transitioning our online services to a live stream service as of Sunday the 10th of January. This will broadcast at 10 a.m. For most of us, given the ongoing government restrictions, we'll be able to continue engaging with church online via the CLM Church YouTube channel, but we'll also be opening up a limited number of spaces to join us in person for the live stream. 
We will be delivering all aspects of the service live, including our worship, the sermon, and also our hosting segments. Bookings for this will open next Sunday, 3rd of January, so set a reminder to be sure to book in. We can't wait to take this next step and welcome you into the building. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and a happy new year. Well, CLM, what a year it's been. We know that we have all heard the word unprecedented an unprecedented number of times, but really it has been something of an unforgettable year, hasn't it? We began the year, it seems a long time ago now, uh, absolutely wonderful 21 days of prayer when uh, we taught and we learned about four different prayers, the Lord's Prayer, Psalm 23, Tabernacle Prayer and the Prayer of Jabez. I don't know if you remember that. I, I was looking at my diary for the start of the year and was amazed to see how much in January, February, we were planning for the year that was coming. Things like CLM's big mission weekend and, and Open Heaven and the Higher Tour and Genexus and CLM's missions trips to Lebanon. And some of those things have been able to go ahead, but, but many of the things have had to be postponed. And at that time, many of us were unaware of the elbow bump and had never really worn a face mask. And obviously in March, the country went into lockdown number one. As a church team, like so many of you in your work and your study contexts, we had to learn how to operate online overnight. And we want to say a massive thank you to every single one of you for adapting, for remaining committed to the body of Christ expressed here in the CLM Church family. We want to say thank you for so many of you that so readily and quickly adapted your giving to give online and it has meant through the whole of this year ministries and missions have been able to continue at full pace and even though we've had to adapt what how that's looked we've been able to keep going we're aware of churches that have had to furlough staff and pull back from what they've been doing and we're so grateful that the outworking of the vision that we carry has not been limited in this regard we want to thank our incredible life group leaders and course leaders and ministry leaders for your agility, your resilience, your faithfulness and, and to our worship team and, and tech team and, and staff for serving and keeping ministries, mission and services going so well. Learning new skills and for some switching job roles overnight. You've done so well. We also want to commend and honour those of you that have served on the front line. We'll probably all remember Clap for Carers in the early part of the year and great that so many that serve in the medical profession and care and, and social care, health care um, were honoured in that way. But when Clap for Carers finished, you've carried on and mem many members of the CLM congregation and we want to honour you. And, and also for those whose work and businesses have been significantly impacted in 2020 and for, for some who have lost loved ones in 2020, we have continued to pray for you and we will continue to pray for you. 2020 also brought racial justice into the spotlight with the appalling and highly visible killing of George Floyd. For many in the church community here, it brought current and historic pain of racism and racial injustice to the forefront. And 2020 has been a journey of seeking to process that in a healthy way with God and with others. For some of us, 2020 has been a really significant year of learning, of awakening to the present or some of the present and historic realities of racial injustice, which has been deeply moving, at times shocking and definitely illuminating. And we trust that for all of us. There is a united commitment to play our part in seriously pursuing racial justice going forward. And as we move into 2021, the elders and the directors will be working closely with the CLM Task Force for Racial Justice as we develop an impactful, medium and long term action plan to ensure that as a church we make a difference. But we want to say thank you at this moment to all of you and well done for the journey so far, for your grace and your prayers and your godliness and so importantly your commitment to the unity in the body of Christ. In the city 
We've been honoured to play our part again in the united work of churches together. And in Kingdom Partnership, we've played a strong role in keeping united prayer on the agenda with city praise and prayer and facilitating open heaven, where we prayer walked literally every street in Coventry in the summer. And that's a model that now has been taken up by a number of other cities across the UK. We've also partnered with 13 different missions, organizations and charities and projects through 2020. And by the grace of God, we understand that as a church, we have given away more financially to missions in 2020 than any previous year in the church's history. And that is so encouraging in a year of pandemic. Through giving and through congregational involvement, working with our missions partners, we've played our part as a church in serving the homeless, uh, praying for the sick, reaching those who are socially isolated, supporting Coventry refugees and asylum seekers, feeding the hungry, supporting the rescue and rehabilitation of victims of human trafficking, helping people get free from debt, supporting Syrian refugees in Lebanon, as well as contributing to the repairing of windows and doors blown out in the devastating explosion in Beirut's port, alongside the sharing of the gospel of Jesus. What a privilege to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to represent him to those who are vulnerable and, and in need, and to all of you that have played your part. Well done, awesome. And then incredibly, last month, we finished the extraordinary four-year journey of clearing the church's mortgage, a miracle through our hands. And we received the prophetic word that we are in a moment or a season of shift. And even since that Vision Sunday, we've had a number of exciting conversations about missional opportunities, particularly here in the city of Coventry, which we hope will come to fruition and we'll be able to share with you in due course. But we're excited and expectant for what God will do among us. So thank you, CLM, for being on the journey of 2020. We're believing for a significant 2021. Never has it been more obvious that the church is not the building, the church is the people. We hope you can get some good rest during the Christmas break and come into the new year refreshed. And here is a brief snapshot of CLM's church services and how they've looked through 2020. We hope you enjoy it. that surrounds me Just one word The darkness has to retreat Just one touch I feel the presence of heaven Just one touch My eyes were open to see My heart can help but believe 
well, how wonderful was that to see and remember? Amazing. And we do want to just take a moment right now to say a big shout out and thank you to particularly the production team. We're aware literally hundreds of people play their part and play your part to make CLM work. But we want to say a special thank you to AJ Brown and along with him, Gilmore Kassar and Jamie Meiniger and Rochelle Pellias, who particularly have edited and filmed and made work every single service since March and without which this wouldn't have happened. And so we want to honor you. Thank you for the late nights, the early mornings, the hard work, the excellence, the Lord sees it all. But we want to say we love you. We're so grateful. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Right now, we're going to bring our tithes and our offerings as we come to the end of 2020. And we can do that online simply by going to the website and clicking on the giving tab. That's CLM's website, clmchurch.co.uk. If you click on the giving tab, then you will find there's two different options. You can give uh, by bank transfer or you can give using a credit card. Uh, just click on the appropriate box and all the information there is really straightforward as to how to do that. If you're bringing um, an offering that relates to a vision offering pledge, then you'll see there's some information as to how to reference your gift so it is noted against your pledge. And lastly, you can text uh, to give that way if you're giving up to or including £20 simply by using the number 70085 and text CLM Give followed by the amount you want to give. Thank you so much. And right now we're going to move to today's message. And uh, we are delighted to introduce Gabriel Badabo. Gabriel's part of our staff team here and uh, he's well loved by you all. Heads up CLM Youth and he's got a special word for this Christmas time. Well, good morning, church, and Merry Christmas. I hope you had a wonderful day and you were able to tuck into some turkey or duck or chicken or whatever the Christmas go-to is in your house, regardless of what you were able to eat. I hope you had a great day celebrating our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Well, it's my honour and privilege to be sharing the Word of God with you today. But before we get into it, why don't we pray together? Heavenly Father, thank you for your Word. Thank you that you delight to speak to us through your Word. And Lord, we pray that as we take time to draw near to you today, that you would open our hearts and you reveal your truth to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today, as we come to the Word, I'm going to take us to an amazing encounter we see being had with a baby Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. So if you've got a Bible or device with you, why don't you turn with me to Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. And if not, don't worry, the words will also come up on the screen. I'll read it for us. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what a custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause a falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. So CLM kids, as you're watching today, why don't you try and draw this meeting between a baby Jesus, Mary, Joseph and a man called Simeon that they come across in the temple. And why don't you try and draw Simeon carrying the baby Jesus in awe and amazement. Well, for all of us, these are some truly profound words here spoken by Simeon over a baby that would have been no more than about 40 days old at the time. But this wasn't just any baby, and this man of God knew that. Though only 10 verses, this prophecy shares richly on the impact Jesus would go on to have on the world. And there's so much we can discover here. But for today, I'd like to simply draw out three things we can learn about Jesus from Simeon's prophecy. And so the title of my message today is simply Simeon's Profound Prophecy. Well, firstly, we learn from Simeon's prophecy that Jesus was a promise fulfilled. 
For generations, the people of God have been waiting on a promised Messiah who is going to save them and set them free from oppression. We can see from this passage that Simeon, a righteous and devout man who was led by the Holy Spirit, was amongst those who were waiting in anticipation. In fact, it may reveal to him, as we've just read, by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And right here in this encounter, we can see that promise fulfilled. I don't know what some of you have got for Christmas presents over the years, but I had some great ones and I've had some interesting ones, let's say. But I remember one year, I was in primary school at the time and the Xbox, the first Xbox came out. Some of you are too young to remember that, but it was the first Xbox. And me and my brothers wanted it so badly. And as the youngest, I was nominated to go and ask our parents for it. So I went to speak to my mum and dad and I asked them, can we get the Xbox this year? And they said, yes. They promised that we we're gonna be able to get it for Christmas. And to be honest with you, I was surprised because previously to that, if we'd asked for something that was that expensive, we'd normally get a straight shutdown. But on this occasion, they said yes. So I waited in anticipation for Christmas to come round. And on Christmas day, I remember getting up so excited, running downstairs, and lo and behold, I unwrapped the package in, and it was the Xbox. And I was so excited. I had waited for so long. I'd waited on this promise that was shared with me by my mum and dad, and it came to the day, and this promise was fulfilled. And although this example pales in comparison to the promise that was given to Simeon, it gives us a bit of a picture of the joy that he would have felt when the promise that was given to him was fulfilled. His years of waiting in eager anticipation were worth it. And we see this expressed in verse 28, as it says that Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. Simeon was so overjoyed by this promise fulfilled by God that he was now happy to die in peace. Wow, he had met with the promised Messiah of the Lord. This promise fulfilled to Simeon provides us with a beautiful reminder of the promise-keeping God that we serve. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not one to speak and not act or to promise something and not deliver. He is faithful and he's trustworthy and he's true to his word. And we see here the greatest promise ever given to mankind being fulfilled, that the word Jesus will become flesh and make his dwelling among us. Secondly, we learn from Simeon's prophecy that Jesus will bring salvation. As we go on to verses 30 to 31, we see Simeon's praises unto God continue. He says, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. He said this as he looked upon the baby Jesus in his hands, and by the Holy Spirit could see that he'd be the one to bring about the Lord's salvation. He could see something of the rescuing, freeing, purifying work that Jesus would go on to do. And for us, it can be easy to read this and miss the time and context in which it's being said. But it's important that we note that the reason Jesus' parents even brought him into the temple was to follow the law of Moses and to consecrate or dedicate him to the Lord. And to do this, they need to make a sacrifice, as verse 24 explains. But how amazing is it that this baby Jesus that they were dedicating and making sacrifice for was going to go on to become the sacrifice for the world? That he was going to eradicate the need for purification rites and any acts of purification under the law because he was going to go on and become our purification and by his blood cleanse us from all that would keep us away from God. As Isaiah 53 says, he would be pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that would bring us peace was going to be on him. And by his wounds, we have been healed. Simeon could see before him the manifestation of God's great love for creation. A love so great that he would send his one and only son to restore all of mankind back to him. As the apostle John puts it, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Through this encounter, Simeon could get a glimpse of the incredible saving work that Jesus would go on to do. But how amazing that over 2,000 years later, after Jesus had grown and lived a perfect life and died on our behalf, that we stand here as those that can receive this gift of salvation offered freely. And this brings me to the third thing that we can learn from Simeon's prophecy about Jesus that a salvation that Jesus brings is for all. There was a common misconception amongst the Jewish people that Jesus, who would be born of Jewish heritage, would come only to save the Jewish people. 
But we can see from our reading today that Simeon had a more accurate understanding of the work that Jesus would come to do. As he continued praising God, we see him saying that the salvation that Jesus would bring would be a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. By Gentiles, he was simply referring to anyone that isn't a Jew. Simeon knew that Jesus' saving work wasn't reserved solely for the people of Israel or the Jewish people, but for the entire world. We also see the same truth understood and shared in the book of Isaiah, which was written hundreds of years before Jesus' birth. In Isaiah 49, verse 6, it says, speaking of Jesus, I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Church, this is God's heart, that salvation would come to every end of the earth, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord would be saved. And Simeon grasped this wonderful truth, but he knew it would come at a cost. We see him saying directly to Mary in verse 35 that a sword would pierce her own soul too. Why did he say this? Well, I think Simeon understood that Jesus would endure great suffering in his time and his ministry on earth. He would face great opposition and experience extreme suffering to the point of death on a cross and would expectedly lead Mary to feel great pain and sorrow as she saw her son go through this. But his death on a cross and his eventual resurrection provided a way for all to receive salvation. It provided a way for me and you to be restored to right relationship with our Father in heaven. That we no longer have to strive or seek to fulfill laws that we couldn't uphold, but we can come and accept the gift that has been freely given to us. But church, just as Simeon prophesied, this salvation that we received in Jesus is for all. God's heart is not that we receive it and keep it to ourselves, but that instead we would allow it to spread in our families, in our universities, in our workplaces, in our colleges, in the world around us. But as the Apostle Paul says in Romans 10, how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? Church, we've seen the promise of Jesus be fulfilled. We've been enlightened to the wonderful salvation that he brings us. Now, church, would we be and continue to be those that would be allow the Holy Spirit to work through us to bring this wonderful message of salvation to all? One of the most beautiful things about the prophecy of Simeon is that it shows us something of the work of the Holy Spirit in a heart that is obedient and receptive to God. And this is what God is calling us to, church. Not that we'd have it all figured out or that we'd be the most polished evangelist, but that we'd be obedient to God's word and be sensitive to his Holy Spirit. So as I finish today, I simply like to pray for us. And if you'd like the Lord to use you to bring this wonderful message of salvation for all to the world around you, why don't you stand with me now and open your heart to God? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your great love to us. Thank you, Lord God, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to fulfill the promise that has been spoken for generations and come and be the gift of salvation to mankind. Thank you that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you come and take a residence in our hearts. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd compel us, empower us and equip us to be kingdom bringers to the world around us. That we would take this message into the dark areas. We take this message into the areas that need your light and your love. That you would embolden us and equip us to be your kingdom bringers. And I pray, Lord, that through us, you'd allow your kingdom to come and your will to be done. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen and wonderful. Well, just before we bring our service to a close today, we would love to give you the opportunity at Christmas to connect with God if you haven't done this yet already. It really is as simple as praying a prayer and all you need to do is follow along with me. In just a moment, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. And if you need to do that, open up your heart, pray where you are along with me and the God of heaven who knows you and loves you and created you, he will hear your prayer and respond to you. So here's the prayer, it should come up on the screen as well. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died for me on the cross to give me life. I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong and I ask for your forgiveness. I invite you to be my Lord and Saviour. Help me to live for you each and every day. In your name, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you. You can just drop us a text to 60777 and just put in the text CLM followed by your name. And this will just enable someone from our team to get in touch with you in the next couple of days and we can help you work out what might be a great next step for you. Also today, as you heard earlier, if you're new, if you want to say hi to our welcome team, if you'd like someone to pray with you over Zoom, if you're trying to get more connected within church, any of these things, head to our Connect Point. You'll find both our welcome team and our prayer team will be there and someone will direct you to a breakout room. You'll see there's a link in the chat uh, or you can just go to clmchurch.co.uk forward slash Connect Point and you'll need this passcode, which is 038. 025. Well, we pray that you continue to have a wonderful time over Christmas, a wonderful few days, and in just a few days time, a happy new year. And uh, we'll see you same time, same place next week, 3rd of January. But as we come to a close, allow me to speak a blessing over you as 2020 begins to draw to a close. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May he himself make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.
love's pure light Radiant beams from thy holy face With the dawn of redeeming grace Jesus, Lord, at thy Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Silent night, holy night, all is calm and all is bright around yon virgin Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing all the plain And the mountains in reply Echoing their joy Angels we 